So we have with us today, um, our guest speaker is Cynthia Nations from the Master Gardeners. And also joining us are Kathy Stam and Kathy Fleming, who's actually a friend of mine. And that's how I got the idea of inviting the Master Gardeners is from Kathy Fleming. So thanks, Kathy. <laughs> um, but anyway, Cynthia Nations is our speaker today, and she's going to share about the Master Gardeners program. And hopefully at the end, we'll have a nice opportunity to be able to ask questions that we might have about our, our own landscaping or, or gardening issues that we have. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Cynthia Nations. Welcome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I want to thank you all for inviting us to speak uh, during your meeting today. Uh, I think Candy, can I call you Candy? Gave us a perfect segue into, you know, learning about our Master Gardener program. And I also want to thank Laura Maharis, and um, she's going to be fielding the chat questions. So if you have questions, you can uh, type them in the chat box and uh, Laura will um, help us to uh, try to answer your questions. We don't know everything. We're supposed to be master gardeners, but we um, don't know everything, I will have to admit. But we- oh, hi, hi, Laura. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to, I forgot to um, acknowledge you, Laura. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, and I think Shirley Melnico, um, actually this year, I've only oh, been yeah, president Shirley's for a few months, but Shirley Melnico um, might be joining us. I can't see the yeah, screen. Yeah, I, I see her name too. Yeah, hi, Shirley. Oh, great. Welcome. She knows a lot more than I do because she's the previous president. Anyway, I will go ahead and start. Um, so what we're going to do, we always do, we do so many presentations. Uh, what we're going to be addressing today is just, you know, a little bit about our Master Gardener organization, becoming how you become a Master Gardener uh, through the UC uh, system, uh, some of the training topics in graduation, and um, some of the wonderful, I just was not able to, um, you know, I just picked some of our uh, big projects because we have so many smaller projects going. And then uh, Mr. Tre uh, Parisi t uh, asked us a few questions. So I'm going to try my best to answer the questions that, that he had. All right, so basically when you become a master gardener, we have a huge mission statement. Uh, and basically it's to um, provide research-based knowledge and information uh, to uh, the whole uh, community. Uh, on home agriculture, pest management, sustainable landscape practices to San, San Mateo and San Francisco counties. And we are uh, very connected to UC. They govern a lot of our rules and regulations. I know that I'm actually just, I have only been living here in the El Granada area. I retired here because my children are here, but I've only been, re I've only been living here for eight, eight years. So my children, of course, thank goodness they both landed, both my daughters landed in one spot. So I live in El Granada. Before that, I was going to join Master Gardeners in Texas. So Master Gardeners is a university-based um, um, nationwide program and each state has its own um, uh, governance over the program. Um, one of the vision, part of the vision is to promote and, oh, you know, I, I was gonna go back there because we are actually uh, receiving um, our continuing education uh, credit and we're in a barn at Elkus. So we, can, we have so many different venues that are so interesting, but that's us in the uh, barn and Elkus Ranch uh, receiving, uh, you know, listening to some of, this was pre-COVID of course. So uh, we have lots of different venues where we, um, we uh, get our continuing education. Where is, where is um, Elkus Ranch? Where is that? Elkus Ranch, uh, if you go on Highway 1 South, a little past Half Moon Bay, um, there, it's a UC um, sponsored ranch. Uh, they have so many things there and uh, we have a, a big garden there. It's part of the, the UC um, system and um, we're able to have a big garden there and I'll, I'll talk about the Elkus Ranch Garden there for Master Gardeners in a minute. But it's, um, it's a wonderful place to, to get out and uh, breathe in the fresh air and uh, do a lot of work actually. Cynthia, are you going to pause for questions or do you want me to read them as they come in? 
how would you all like to handle it? Would you like to do questions during or after? I thought we were going to do them after and um, you guys can, uh, can type them in chat. Would, would that be good or would you rather? Uh, yeah, I, I think that sounds fine, yeah. Okay, all right. All right. So part of the vision is to uh, promote and create healthy communities. And this is a picture of us at, uh, we uh, Master Gardeners often have home gardens that we open up to our own members so we can share all of our ideas. This is uh, one of the ways we can just get all kinds of great information. Uh, and we, t we talk about sustainable gardening, plant-based nutrition and, and science literacy. And everything that we do, and, and I have really noticed um, in my own gardening, that I do a lot of research before I will even purchase a plant. I need to know the soil, I need to know the shade, how much it needs, I need to know how much water it, it, it will take. So there's so many things that we do um, uh, to promote and create healthy communities. I have lots of veggies growing in my garden now. Previously, it was just a kind of a hit or miss situation. Uh, part of the um, vision is to, to support um, healthy, um, we pr promote sustainable environmental practices by providing communities with guidance on soils and the select uh, selection and care and placement of plants. And here is uh, one of our master gardeners. We really get down into the soil and we uh, know the components of the soil. It's, it's very, very interesting. I never thought that I would be so interested in soil and we don't call it dirt anymore. We call it soil <laughs> of a certain wonderful quality. And, and we love to, to actually there are health, health benefits to breathing in healthy soil. And I never knew that, the, just the, the aroma. All right, um, part of the vision uh, is to produce uh, healthy, create healthy environments. And I've already talked about our healthy soil. We talk about green waste management and these are all the continuing education hours that, that, that are available to us. And we're always searching for things on the internet as well as um, developing our own presentations that we provide for the public. So uh, invasive plant species, I've learned a lot about invasive plants uh, and um, guidance in protecting local ecosystem and water and energy conservation. And I know that right now at the present, we, are, uh, we have a team of master gardeners who are um, helping us uh, develop a series of presentation on keeping our, our, our land and our gardens and our homes safe from fire. So this is uh, something that we're working on right now. We also want to improve the quality and ensure our vi uh, viability, viability and visibility of our Master Gardener program. I don't know if any of you have ever attended are actually we call it the spring garden market of course this year we were not able to have it but uh, we grow to make us all kinds of other plants uh edibles herbs and we um we have i hope that my i'm just now getting an inter internet is unstable so i hope you can hear me um this is a picture of our spring garden market that is held at the San Mateo Event Center. Uh, this would be the fourth year that we have, or I guess it's gonna be the fifth year that we've had it, but we were not able to pr uh, have that uh, sale this year. Uh, and it's like our major fundraiser. And you can see that all the people are there. The, we we um, have a great uh, plant library that we put online so people can select their plants according to the region that they live in. If you live on the coast or if you live in uh, San Francisco or if you live uh, on the peninsula, um, we're able to show you what varieties of tomatoes or peppers or other plants to um, um, purchase, as well as we, we've expanded into succulents because they have been so popular lately. So how do you become a Master Gardener volunteer? Some of you all might want to join this um, wonderful organization. I know that I have found it being a, a fairly newcomer here. I've been able to really uh, keep very, very busy uh, being outside, doing the things I love with gardening. And um, so if you all are ever interested in becoming um, a Master Gardener, 
uh, there is an application online. We won't be doing our, ne our next training uh, until 2022 uh, due to COVID and um, you know, all of the other, other things that are happening this year. So what you do is uh, you will go to an orientation, you'll have a phone interview and an in-person interview so that you can understand the program. And we really do in, uh, commit to an extensive and intensive university training. And um, we have some volunteer requirements, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, during the classes, actually last year, I kind of um, facilitated and, and planned uh, the, cl the class of 2020 that just graduated. Uh, in, in January, it, it went from sev uh, September of 2019 to, to uh, January of 2020. And uh, you have um, a lot, you experience uh, Master Gardener uh, lecturers. Usually they come from UC Davis or we have some other, other well-known speakers in the area. I know that I had the opportunity of hearing Pam, uh, Pam Pierce who uh, wrote, wrote a wonderful book uh, about all the plants that grow in our Northern California area. We also do, I have a picture there of, um, we have Lisa and Kathleen Putnam and they helped us. Um, and uh, this how to do pruning. So it's just so exciting to learn all these things with a, a combination of uh, lectures, but also hands-on. And then um, Master Gardeners are also uh, invited to do their own research projects and gardening design, and we just learn about everything. So these are all the topics that we, we talk about weather and microclimates. We have uh, climate change, plant tax, uh, taxonomy. Uh, we learn about trees and shrubs. We learn how to identify names of genus and species of plants. Uh, plant pathology, integrated pest management, a lot about soil, uh, some about uh, pruning and ornamental plants. So there's so many things uh, that we learn about and the training begins, it's like a college course. Um, this last time, usually the, the training would be on Wednesdays uh, and it's for 16 uh, consecutive weeks all day. So um, usually people have to kind of make sure that they're able to, to attend for those 16 weeks. It's well worth it. And then the, we have our graduation ceremony. You can see everybody's very, very excited. And after we uh, have graduation, uh, they do not have to have continuing education hours for the first year, um, but they do have to have 50 volunteer hours. We've kind of been a little bit more uh, lenient with those, um, we, you know, actually we've forgiven the 50 hours this year because of course we can't be in person as much. We do have a few projects going on, but uh, UC California has us following certain uh, guidelines, of course, with the mass with six feet apart. So there are certain gardens that we work in right now that we're able to do that as long as we all the, the rules that we have to follow during COVID. Um, and it's been a, a challenging year, I can tell you. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about some of our community projects. Um, the Gardening Education Center is located in the San Mateo Event Center. Shirley Melnico might be able, the, the past president was very instrumental in, in uh, writing, you know, she's, she had to actually, this took two, or, two and a half or three years to uh, make sure we followed all the guidelines set up by University of California and the San Mateo Event Center and the San Mateo uh, County. So basically what we do here, you can see it's so beautiful. It just used to be a, a little uh, space of land full of weeds. And now it's a dedicated growing space that includes the greenhouse facilities and demonstration gardens. Before COVID, we had so many good, um, um, activities here. We did uh, continuing education for our Master Gardener community as well as uh, some other very, very fun and learning activities for the community. I know one of the things that were very popular is last October we did pumpkin decorating with succulents and we did wreath making and there were just, and in, in addition to all the horticultural practices, I know there was a strawberry. We, we 
uh, one of our um, one of our master gardeners is an expert strawberry grower. So we have a strawberry um, plant uh, patch there. And, and I remember I attended that strawberry uh, demonstration in class and we actually, you know, were able to plant the strawberries at the GEC uh, after the presentation. So you can see, and we grow many, many of our vegetables for our spring garden markets and for a fall market, which of course we're not having now but um, lots of activities at that GEC. And it was just, um, it's just a wonderful place to go visit. I was just there yesterday um, delivering, well, delivering materials for another project that we're doing. And it looks like it's just uh, flourishing even now during our COVID time. One of the activities I had to highlight, highlight this because I was so, uh, uh, interested in it, we, um, the, the master gardeners built a bioreactor uh, where they um, do aerobic composting. And um, what aerobic composting is, is basically if you see in that structure and you can see in that bottom uh, left picture, uh, you put these uh, pipes down so that the um, compost or all the leaves and everything that we put in there uh, get oxygen. And uh, it versus uh, the, the, oh, I, it was aerobic and this other one, I made a mistake. It's called anaerobic uh, process produces, uh, well, it produces heat uh, as the bacteria consumes oxygen and, and it kills any pathogen and weed seeds when composting. Therefore, you don't have the, that anaerobic smell that sometimes our compost gets if we don't turn it enough. Uh, it needs to be aerobic. Also, I, I was, um, it was interesting uh, that we were offered a little bit of that compost, a couple of gallons of the compost, and we were making compost tea, which I had never done before, but um, I'm making it now. It's a very interesting process. All right, here's, here's a little bit. Somebody asked about Elkus Ranch. Um, Elkus Ranch, you can see pictures there of the sheep and We've had our, uh, our, usually we have our July um, conference or meeting there. We all get together a couple of times a year, uh, one time in July. And there's a picture, a good picture of all the beds that we use. And um, what we do is we, uh, one of the things we do is we have in the past conducted research garden trials uh, um, for uh, different research that we've been doing that our members might want to do. Uh, we do a uh, spring garden market growing there. A lot of our plant propagation is there. And um, also uh, we're part of public tours during the Elkus Ranch preschool days, uh, Sheep to Shawl, where they show, actually Elkus Ranch shows uh, how to, um, you know, form um, uh, material out of the sheep's wool. And it's just a very interesting place to go. If uh, I don't know, there are, uh, it's open to the public, I think sometimes. And I know that a lot of, um, I know my grandchildren have gone there a lot during, um, as um, school field trips. Another project that we're involved in, I think we have like about 198. I can't remember exactly what our, membership uh, chair told me, but are almost 200 members. So we have a lot of different projects going on. And one of my favorite, I have uh, given a succulent presentation there before, um, is the Fair Oaks uh, Community Center. Uh, it's over there by Costco on, oh my goodness, I forgot the name of the, the, the road, but it's uh, over there. Um, Middlefield Road? Can, where is it? Mid, is it on? With, Middlefield Road, I, I don't, Redwood City. I forgot the, the name of the road that it's on. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's in Redwood City. So um, we're able to, uh, the master gardeners who work there, there's a team of master gardeners who work there with the community and they have a demonstration gardener uh, garden there. And uh, they have activity sessions, hands-on, and they're usually one hours, and it's open uh, to the center's participants as well as the public. Uh, also, we have special needs groups and children's group who share that garden. And uh, some of the produce you can see there in the bottom, oh, I think that that's a pumpkin making um, a project, but some of the edible produce is shared with the center chef for meals at the center. 
So to me, this is like one of a, a very rewarding uh, community project. I don't know if any of you have ever walked through the San Mateo Ar Arboretum, but we have had a plant clinic there and it has gone on for, for actually many years, as long as I can remember, uh, February through November and, and master gardeners uh, operate a table there at the, at the entrance to the garden uh, to assist the uh, public with their gardening questions and provide research um, information uh, and solutions. We usually have a, a one master gardener, Susan Cornfield lately has, has manned that, but of course it has also been closed during, during this, this year. Um, a wonderful, another wonderful um, and community related um, project that we're involved in is the uh, Hillsborough Harvest Garden. Uh, it's it's kind of it's a, a kind of a nice big property, and uh, it it this property is a a place where master gardeners help um, residents learn how to grow edible plants successfully in the Hillsborough climate, uh, and also. Master Gardeners provide the uh, public with uh, seasonal topics every Sunday from uh, uh, from March through November, of course. Uh, actually, there are a few of those workshops going on now, but of course, we have to follow all the rules. Uh, what I really am impressed with with this garden is that uh, to date, over 10,400 pounds of organic produce has been delivered to the Samaritan Food Pantry. Uh, which is one of the largest truck to table food distributors in San Mateo County. Um, this garden, uh, there we have a group of uh, dedicated uh, workers who just man this, they train the, the public and they, um, they don't donate all the produce uh, to a very, very worthy uh, place, the, the Samaritan House Food Pantry. Uh, right now, there is another one, and it's actually um, at Elkus Ranch. Uh, we are, we do have the co-op, we're part of a cooperative extension that includes the um, Master Food Preserver, the 4-H, uh, and the Master Gardeners, and the Nutrition Program. And there's one uh, program called Healthy Living Am uh, Ambassadors, and these, um, it includes teams of four to six um, teen, teenagers um, and they're usually, I think, 4-Hers who help um, teach uh, elementary school uh, uh, in local after-school programs about gardening, nutrition, and physical fitness. And uh, one of the things is we have, um, I can't remember how many Master Gardeners have volunteered, but we, I think we have about 20 Master Gardeners who are actually right now growing 1,000 seedlings for these uh, teens to take to different um, different schools, um, elementary schools in Daly City, San Mateo, Redwood City, and Pescadero. So uh, they teach, um, these teens go out, they're gonna take these seedlings out to these different schools and they're going to help, um, um, help you know, uh, elementary school children uh, learn about gardening. Uh, I don't know if any of you ever love to walk down um, Laurel Street in San, San uh, Carlos, but uh, if you look at all the, the huge master gardeners and, um, and we provide the educational material um, via signs uh, in, and, and it tells about all the plants that are growing in there, I guess, uh, so that, um, you know, they can see what kind of plants will grow well uh, in the San Carlos microclimate. Also, uh, another educational theme garden, I know this just started last year. Um, last year, uh, in, if you're familiar with um, the, the San Carlos Library and the administration building. Um, so in that garden, um, we've, um, we've planted theme gardens. Uh, and basically each, each garden has a team to plant, maintain, and create a set of presentations for the public. And that will happen hopefully as soon as we um, are able to uh, be safe from our uh, current situation with COVID. Another 
wonderful place is the Veterans Memorial Senior Center. I don't know if you all are familiar with that, but we also have a demonstration garden uh, there. And uh, we've had a speaker series where uh, different um, speakers speak on different topics about growing veggies. And um, we also share two in? beds with special needs groups. And um, also the food that is grown there is donated to the chef at the senior center for me meals for the seniors that are a lot of seniors eat there. I don't know, it's a wonderful place. I don't know if anybody has ever uh, visited there, but it's a, it's a wonderful area and a wonderful park in Redwood City. end of, of every presentation. Uh, our helpline is so instrumental in helping uh, getting uh, providing good gardening practices. You can actually call the helpline and I will be giving you guys a copy of this, um, you know, what the helpline and uh, Memorial and the uh, San Francisco Botanical Garden. Of course, right now, it's nobody can go there in person. You could, before you could even take your your uh, damaged or insect uh, ridden plant to the to the location. But right now, we're just doing it all online. And soon we are going to have um, questions that you're going to be able to ask um, via our new website as soon as we um, get it all going. We're, we're really doing a improvement right now. All right, so you, uh, Ms. Uh, Parisi gave us, uh, had a, a lot of requests, and I don't know if we can actually, in, in a 30-minute talk, a very quick talk to me, um, provide that uh, request, but I'm going to do my best to answer the questions that, that he, he had asked. You want questions from the yes. chat now? Pardon me? Not time for questions yet. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, this I think would be, we have a speakers bureau. And, and in the Speakers Bureau, actually, Kathy Stam is here and she'll be able to answer your questions. I don't know if any of our Master Gardeners have been, um, have created a presentation on native and drought tolerant plants, but uh, basically drought tolerance refers to a measure of how well plants will survive during extended dry periods like now. And uh, natives are best defined as those who have adapted to a specific location and remain genetically unaltered by humans. And some of those plants are drought tolerant. I think that if you uh, wanted more information about specific plants, you can look at our uh, University of California Agriculture and Natural Resources um, site. It's called the California Garden Web. Uh, and you can also, um, you know, get in touch uh, with Kathy Stam, and you can do that via our website, or, you know, we might be able to provide a, a, an email address for you at the end of this. So if you're interested in the difference between uh, drought, you know, drought tolerance and natives. Also, um, the request was, what are good nurseries in the Bay Area? Uh, we have, Master Gardeners uh, can't, ex uh, you know, we're not able to advertise one nursery or, or talk about our favorite nursery. So I just put in some of the, the nurseries that I, you know, I have, you know, attended and I know that they're very good. They have a good variety. They have good descriptions. They have healthy plants. So I just, uh, I'm just providing you, um, you know, a, a lot of different choices because we're not supposed to be able to, um, we can't just endorse one, one nursery in particular. Also, uh, tips for a healthy flourishing garden. Uh, I'm going to refer you to the California Gardening Web again. And then I have there, um, actually, they, I have that um, UC Master Gardeners of San Mateo and San Francisco counties. I have the link uh, so you can request a speaker. Um, I would, if you have a certain topic, I would request um, a, a, a long, ahead of time uh, because we might not have that particular topic, but we probably have a master gardener who is willing to um, 
willing to develop such a topic. I know that I got a request this morning on our next door neighborhood in El Granada where I live and uh, somebody wanted me to develop something on uh, Karapia. So that might be in the works, it's, which is a, a, a Japanese ground cover that is um, to me so much better than grass, but that's my opinion. Anyway, I might be developing one on Karapia, but you can, you know, if you want to uh, address a, a particular topic, we have lots of um, topics available on growing winter veggies, like right now, uh, there's just so many topics that we have already in our Speakers Bureau. We call it our Speakers Bureau Library. Another uh, question that was uh, asked if we could address was chemical and pesticide alternatives. I know if you go to this uh, UCA, UCA biological soil solarization and sustainable landscape practices as a mean to uh, get rid of all these pests that we have. Um, it also, there's a lot of our master gardener, um, our master gardeners have attended uh, integrated pest management training uh, through UC California. And uh, a lot of those kinds of um, presentations that we can offer to the public have already de been developed. I know that I was part of a a uh, um, presentation where we developed um, a presentation around weeds, all the different kinds of weeds that we have growing in our area. So that was a very interesting um, experience. So I just have our references, the, what, the uh, references that I've used for this presentation. And then we always um, end, like I said before, with our uh, helpline information. So basically that is what I uh, have to share. And I, I don't know who has, um, you know, uh, entered some chat questions. Laura, do we have chat questions? And, and then can you. I just add something, add something um, really quick? Um, um, I want to thank uh, Cynthia and Kathy for sending along a, a nice attachment that I emailed to all of you that had a lot of those slides at the end of her presentation with all those references for, for, for nurseries and and pest management ideas and healthy garden ideas. So all of you should have received an email that had had those uh, those slides on the attachment as a as an aid. So th thank you, Kathy and and Cynthia for for sharing that with us. Here's the question. So there are some chat questions if you want to go through them. Sure, sure. We've already gone through some of them already, Cynthia. And, and maybe uh, Kathy, and I hope Kathy Fleming and Kathy and even Laura and uh, Shirley will be able to help me answer these questions. I can tell you, I don't know everything. <laughs> okay. You just call us out if you think we know. Um, how many members are, are in your organization? I know you said, but you might want to just answer it again. Right. I did talk, Shirley, are, are you familiar? I talked to Jenny, um, you know, it. At the end of, um, actually the end of June, we go through, you know, who's staying, who's moving, who's, who, usually they're moving somewhere. So I, I'm pretty sure in, in between, exactly remember because the number kept fluctuating every time I asked. Shirley, do you know? Around 200. Around 200, okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, does Linkso sell starter plants? If not, where should I go for them? Oh my goodness. Well, um, Linkso does not. Shirley, would you want to answer that? Well, I think that, yeah, Linkso does not. But what I want to say about Linkso, when you're talking about soils, that's, a, that's a, a place you can go. And in fact, the president of Linkso is a master gardener. So we've done classes at Linkso. And then Cynthia had a great slide on places to go for plants, which is nurseries. And I think that that, yes. that would be perfect. And I, and I gave you a, a list of different nurseries that you can go for starter plants. Um, I know that, Shirley, we're so into soil. And I just now, um, I just now, I'm just going to mention Linkso uh, Distal Compost. I mix that in with my old soil from last year. And uh, I have the most beautiful peppers and tomatoes and onions and, every, and potatoes all of those kind of things. Um, I don't know that diesel compost or something to it. So I will just recommend that. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, where is the Hillsboro Harvest Garden located? I mean, I think you mean specifically. I can give you the address for that. Okay. Um, it's 660 Fairway Circle. It's in a residential neighborhood. You just have to map it. <laughs> 660 Fairway Circle, and it's surrounded by homes. It's very interesting to, to visit. It's beautiful. Okay, um, where should I look for ground cover plants that thrive in full sun that can be drip irrigated? Uh, we, we were just, I was just involved last evening on this long, uh, you know how next door people love to, to chat. So um, I, I recommended um, Karapia. Karapia is a Japanese ground cover that people use on slopes. Uh, you know, we're lo always looking for grass alternatives so that we don't use up so much water. Um, you know, I'm really thinking I'm going to do a, a presentation, Kathy, on, on Karapia. But um, so do some of the some of you other master gardeners know about good ground covers? I I, I researched so many before I sheet mulched and um, and finally decided I was planting karapia and it looks like I have a green lawn, but it's uh, cuter because it has all these little white flowers. <laughs> Anybody else about ground covers? Well, I also grow karapia in my front yard, and it is totally drought tolerant. I have not watered it at all this summer, and it's still green and has little clover-like flowers that the bees love. Um, if you want to do it for a lawn, I would not suggest it if you've got small children or dogs that like to run and lay on the grass because there's always bees there. You can also uh, mow it, though, can't you, to keep the flowers down? I think so. Yeah, I've never mowed mine. Uh, I use, actually, I use like, um, I use scissors to just cut it when it gets too long. <laughs> or another master gardener comes and pulls it for me because he comes to get it for um, uh, um, plants for his own yard. So I've had him come twice and he just pulls it for me. It's great. <laughs> oh, someone says, how do you spell carap oh, carapia? And then someone answered it, but you might want to spell it in case people aren't uh, looking at that. K-U-R-A-P-I-A, carapia. You can look it up. Uh, at, uh, here I go again. I don't want to. There's many, many resources online. Carapia Direct is a really good one. CarapiaDirect.com. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> okay. What's the funniest question, Joe asks, that you ever received at the Advice Helpline? Oh, I don't know. There must be some. I'm, I don't work at the help. Well, I did work at the helpline. Uh, anybody uh, know... Uh, a really weird question or funny question. I can't, you know, I can't think of anything. We'll have I, to get Lisa to answer that one. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, we have one um, master gardener who is in charge, uh, you know, like she oversees and facilitates the helpline questions. I'm sure there are a lot, but I, I have no idea if what would be funny, the funniest. <laughs> Mine were always very serious when I worked there. The helpline is also a nice way to to ask a question that you don't know how to um, where to go for it. We frequently get requests for speakers via the helpline. People don't understand that we have a page on our our web page that has the request a speaker link, and so they put in a question to the helpline, and that's always forwarded to me and the and the speakers bureau people. So. Um, we're all connected, and we should we should actually ask Lisa what the funniest thing she ever heard was. That's a good question. I'm sure there must be some funny things. Yeah, we did have some wonderful um, critters that people have brought to us that have been really you know it's been interesting to identify them for them, you know when they bring them in. So I think that's always been fascinating. Right, and some kind of scary, uh, scary insects that you have never even seen before. I, that did happen to me at Elkus one time. Somebody brought in this wormy looking thing that, I mean, I had to do a lot of research because I had never seen such a creature. Yeah. <laughs> How close it? I don't, I can't even pronounce the name of it anymore. I don't know. 
We looked up the, the, you know, the genus and species name, so I don't remember what it was. It was green and brown. <laughs> um, Candy says, I would like to know how to use cuttings of wisteria to propagate the plant. Yes, I have a wisteria plant. I think it's probably something like 80 years old when the house was built. My house is 80 years old. And uh, the late owner planted it and one of the tenants yanked the whole thing out. But to my surprise, it came back. I saw a little shoot, I was so happy. And after many years, the tenant just destroyed it and it came back and now I have this vine growing and I have people coming to my la house the last couple of days looking at my yard They go, well, can I pick cuttings and propagate the wisteria because the flowers ha is a string of light blue, purplish, you know, color mm -hmm. and wisteria is so beautiful in the Japanese garden and in your European gardens too. Now, how do I propagate the uh, plant from a, a cutting? Do any of you know, Shirley? Well, one way to do it is get the hormone, take it, and you want a, a fairly fresh cutting of a wisteria, you know, not the old hardy, hard, and, and cut it, and then uh, put some, you can get this hormone. And I have a, this, the root, uh, it's called the uh, root tone. Yes. Tone. Yeah, root I have a good one. Yeah. And so, and remember, don't put it into the jar because you want to keep it always sanitary. So put some out on a, on a piece of paper and roll it in that and just, just put it in a small pot and try to root it that way. I see. With I the would say do more than one. Grow potting soil or rooting soil? Uh, well, marigold grow. I mean, the, 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 the hormone that you put on it will help it to start the growing faster. Okay. And creating Got your it. roots. Got it. Thank you. I would suggest doing more than one because it, all of them may not root. So True. start a bunch. That's a good idea. Thank you. Any other questions? That is it for the questions, I think. And we are all just so close to the time we, we allotted, right? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions they want to ask? Oh, I have one. <laughs> um, I hope. A couple months ago, I got bitten by a centipede in Honolulu, Hawaii, in my home. The sucker crawled out of my bed, and I stepped on it, and I got bit. Oh. And it was the most like, painful experience ever. This is why I don't live in Hawaii. <laughs> and then I have pest control. I use Terminex to spray, and. I mean, I don't expect to get out of bed at night and step on a centipede inside my bedroom. But anyway, I got bed. I'm okay. But I just wonder, I hope we don't have centipede here. I never see it here. Do we have centipede in California? I, I've never seen one, but you all have lived here longer than I have. What do you all think? I don't, know. I don't think that if we do have them, they get to that size. I think they're very small in the soil. Um, and our climate is different enough that. Yeah, I, I don't think we have it here, but the sucker was nine inches long that bit me. Hey. Oh my yeah. God. I've and when they called 911, the uh, ambulance came and, you know, checked the vital signs and whatnot. And, um, and what I was told was, well, I don't need to go to the emergency, just put me a sworn in, wrap it up in ice. I mean, I was in the, the injection the, from the uh, centipede was actually venom, not a, like a bee sting, it's not that serious, but the venom is like a snake bite. So right. uh, they told me one thing I didn't know the, the centipedes live for three years <laughs> and they multiply. They have several litters a year. So you get a lot of them in Hawaii. They're very extremely prolific. And they travel by pair, male and female. They told me, look for the female. 
because the male bit me <laughs> and I couldn't sleep for two days. I was, I went to, under the bed, I used flashlight, I was checking my linen. I checked I, the whole bed. I had one more, I had one more question. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that centipede stays away from me. I had one more question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a, a lazy gardener. So um, are there a couple of main tips that, that are the most important things that you have to do to, to keep your garden healthy? What are the main things that are the most important things? I, I can answer one of those. Uh, you know, I talked so much about soil. Uh, if you have healthy soil, you're going to have fewer pests. Uh, and I, I know that I have done this uh, and, and I'm so conscientious now about the soil that I have. As a matter of fact, this year, I just don't have any kind of pest on my vegetables, which I'm just really amazed. So I think one of the very good sustainable uh, practices that you uh, can, can um, you know, educate yourself on and utilize is having really good, healthy soil. Anybody else? Another important part to think about in, in your garden is to put the right plant in the right place. So many times we go to the garden center and we see these beautiful plant, plants and we bring them home, put them in the yard and they promptly die. <laughs> and think about your microclimate, you know, where and what the plant needs. Make sure that it has the right light. You don't put a sun plant in the shade and vice versa and it gets the right amount of water. And a lot of people think, oh, I want a native garden, just plant natives. Well. Natives have very specific needs also. So you have to research those particular plants. And going to any garden center, each plant should have a good label on it that tells you what it is, what its requirements are, sun, shade, water, high or low. And if you read those and figure out what parts of your yard have um, those conditions and you put the right plant there, you'll succeed. 